Well, this is the first of three videos on acyl substitution. We've already looked at, in the last few videos, nucleophilic aromatic substitution, where we focused on a benzene ring. And in the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, we saw it was the flip of EAS, electrophilic aromatic substitution, in, the, in this way. In the EAS, we attacked an electrophile. And it was then in that second step, we replaced a proton, or we took a proton away, having electrophilic aromatic substitution, where the electrophile replaces a proton. But in the NAS, we saw that everything was flipped. Groups that were deactivating, like a carbonyl off of a benzene ring, became activators if we want to have a nucleophile come in and attack this carbon. He pulls electron density away. And we needed to have at least a halogen off the benzene ring for any type of NAS. It was helpful to have electron withdrawing groups at the para or ortho positions. So that was EAS and NAS, and we covered that. And then we, before that, covered alcohols, eth ethers, and epoxides in reactions with acids, uh, strong acids or Lewis acids. And then we said epoxides are unique in that they can at be attacked by base bases, or by acid solutions because of the ring strain. But in this uh, discussion, this next three videos, we'll be looking at the reaction of acyl halides, uh, esters, and hydrides, things that have a carbonyl attached to what is or what can be a good leaving group. So we'll have strong base or weak base conditions depending upon how good this leaving group is. And we'll have nucleophiles that in, in essence just come in and start attacking this carbon in the CO double bond. Now in this first video I'd like to just discuss how we make class 1 carbonyls. That is a carbonyl that has a leaving group off of it or a potential leaving group. So we're going to talk about just the formation of carboxylic acid because if I can make carboxylic acid I can make all the derivative class 1 carbonyls, that is carbonyls with leaving groups off of them I can make all the acyl halides, anhydrides, esters, amides, if I know how to make a carboxylic acid. So we'll talk in this first video on how to just make carboxylic acid. We'll look at carboxylation of Grignard reagents, hydrolysis of nitriles, and then just to close, we'll draw some correlations between hydrolysis of nitriles and addition of Grignard reagents to nitriles. Now what is this discussion of class 1 and class 2 carbonyls? Well it's a pretty important discussion and we need to have it before we start talking about any acyl substitution reactions. So the carbonyls, the CO double bond, we can have a lot of different things off of it. We can have al alkanes, hydrogens. So if we have two alkyl groups, let's say methyl and methyl, just to make acetone. If we have just alkyl groups, or alkyl groups with hydrogens, so an H with an R, or even even could be formaldehyde, an H with an H. If all they are are alkyls or hydrogens off the carbonyl, we call them class two carbonyls. Class two carbonyls because the R and the H are not good leaving groups, nor can they be made through acid conditions to be, acid conditions to be good leaving groups. Thus, substitution of these groups does not readily occur. So not good leaving groups, thus substitution is not favored in these reactions. These class two carbonyls we'll see later on often give us addition products where if we have a nucleophile come in and attack this carbon or this carbon, it doesn't matter what we have, whether it be an R and an H or an R and an R, two alkyl groups, we tend to get more of addition products not substitution because these are not good leaving groups. Right, let's jump to the bottom where we see a lot of different class 1 carbonyls where we have a leaving group that's great. This is a halogen. X usually represents a halogen. It's a great LG. Or we have a bad LG that with protonation can be a good leaving group. So in acid conditions we can protonate a carboxylic acid to create a good leaving group. If the mides, we can push them. With protonation, we can try to have this come off <coughs> as a good leaving group. 
Now, it may not be a direct protonation in the first step of these two sites, but in acid conditions, we can create better leaving groups from the amide, from the carboxylic acid, from the ester, and in the middle, sort of not necessarily needing a protonated or protonation or acid conditions. We have the anhydride. This is not a great leaving group here. The carboxylate is a good leaving group. It's not depending upon this solution. It can be hard to push off, but we can have at least a chance for this to leave as is in a negative form because we get a carboxylate, the negative on this oxygen delocalized by resonance to this oxygen here. Great leaving group, good, okay leaving group, bad leaving groups that in acid conditions can be made to be good leaving groups. Regardless, the OH, OR, chlorine, amines, um, the carboxylates are or can be good leaving groups, thus substitution readily occurs. So let's remember that, that the carbonyl with these groups off of them are called class 1. Those with just alkyl groups or hydrogens are considered class 2. So let's make carboxylic acid a class 1 carbonyl and we'll stop. <clears throat> so just a discussion on how to make carboxylic acid a class 1 carbonyl. A class one carbonyl. We want to remember those categories for synth for these carbonyl containing compounds. So what we have here is just carboxylation of a Grignard reagent. Now magnesium, that um, alkali metal, alkaline, sorry, metal, typically is not electronegative. It's typically giving up its electrons in a very significant way, either making the bond completely ionic or very close to. So what I've done here, is, instead of drawing a bond between the R and the magnesium, we've considered it as ionic. We've already broken the bond here and given those two electrons back to the alkyl group, giving it a full negative charge. And we're drawing this so that practically we can understand how to start this reaction. Grignard reagents are very strong bases they are very strong bases. You can't see water with them. If you do, then you're just going to kill your Grignard reagent. So we kind of know how to start then. If we know how to take a magnesium carbon bond, draw it as if the carbon owns those electrons, having a full negative, and the magnesium a full positive. And this bond also would be ionic. So it would actually be Mg2+, plus, and the X would be negative, and the R would be negative. But I eat chloride for breakfast. It's not a dangerous thing. I don't want to eat an alkyl anion. That is a strong base. So that's where I start. I need to do something with this negative. I've got to go reach out and touch something positive. Well, we don't have a lot of choices here. By resonance and by inductive effect, these oxygens are pulling from the carbon, so this carbon would be very partially positive. So we can take the lone pair that was given to that carbon here and the magnesium carbon bond that gives it that negative charge, we can go and attack the partially positive carbon. <clears throat> that just makes sense. So we can say, okay, that would advance then these electrons up because we can't have more than four bonds off of a carbon uh, in a, to make a neutral structure. So we're going to advance those electrons up to this oxygen here and we'll draw what we would have. So we took those two electrons and went from owning to sharing those two with this carbon. <clears throat> We've advanced the electrons up to this oxygen, so he went from sharing to owning another pair. He had two. They're not drawn in. But we gained another one, so I can draw them in if we want. He had two, so did he down here. But he gained another lone pair <clears throat> in this move from sharing to owning. We want to see organic chemistry that way, the flow of electrons kind of usually the arrow is going in one direction. So we're coming to this carbon, these elect electrons are breaking up to this oxygen. We would have, lastly, <coughs> the other carbonyl that was not affected. Now we got to remember to put charge in. We went from owning to sharing, so he's satisfied. R came down, back down in energy. But the oxygen went from sharing to owning. So he went from partially negative to full negative. <coughs> That's our carboxylate, and of course the magnesium 
I'll just draw it again. It's just the X being covalently bonded, but this would be also very ionic. We'll just draw this as coming along. Magnesium is not really necessarily an integral part of this reaction, although it is important to realize there <clears throat> is some binding of your alkaline metals to these oxygens that helps drive this to be acting as a nucleophile, acting as a nucleophile. So when we do have acidic protons around, these can grab them. But in terms of uh, binding to this carbon here, the magnesium can play a role. It can help sort of guide it in by having interaction with this oxygen. I'm not too worried about its reactivity. This is what I need to worry about. It's a full negative on an alkyl group. That's a strong base. So we've drawn our arrow to attack that carbon. And this is, in a sense, come along for the ride. <clears throat> Right, so what we can do now, kind of showing an example down here, is we can protonate this oxygen in a second day's reaction. Of course, we can't have these two mixed together, the carbon dioxide, acid, and Grignard reagent. Because so we just said the Grignard reagent, if we do our good work, we'd say these electrons are really associated with this carbon. We can just draw it as a full negative and a full positive. And that gives us a strong base. So we're just doing some tagging. This carbon and the carbon-magnesium bond would have a high expression of electron density, almost fully ionic. So we just draw it as ionic. Carbon owns those two electrons as a lone pair. Now, of course, if we're in acid conditions, he wouldn't even touch the carbon dioxide. He would just be protonated and we'd be done. So what we have to remember is this is a Monday sort of reaction and reacting with the strong base. And then we have a Tuesday workup. Monday is not part of Tuesday. Let me say that again. The CO2 is our first reaction that we have to initiate. We finish that reaction to make the carboxylate to make a more stable anion from the carb anion to an oxygen with negative charge that has resonance to localization. We wait for that day to complete itself, Monday, and then we have Tuesday, a workup, where we take the proton from water in the acid solution and we just protonate this oxygen. So that would be a Monday reaction. And then we'd add acid <clears throat> and finish the reaction. So I'm showing the full reaction here down below where we have a Monday-Tuesday reaction set back to back. We're showing the mechanism here. The Monday reaction, we would let that go to completion where carbon has a negative strong base to a weak base where we have the oxygen with negative and resonance delocalized. That would be driven thermodynamically. So we'd let Monday finish, and then we'd just work up with an acid. We'd work up to make the neutral 2-phenyl ethanoic acid, our carboxylic acid. Now that's it. Just one way. We, there are many others to make carboxylic acids, but this is just decarbox. This is carboxylation of a Grignard reagent. Important to um, remember that this um, carboxylic acid, or carboxylate, sorry, is more difficult to protonate than just an alcohol, because this is resonance delocalized as a negative charge. So it may be that we'll need to use something stronger as an acid than maybe just acetic acid or, or whatever. We may need a little bit of sulfuric acid in solution to protonate that oxygen. All right. Well, that's uh, carboxylation of a Grignard reagent. We can do some other things in, in be I mean, there are many other ways to make carboxylic acid. I want to sh show you one more. And then we'll be done. We're going to look at one more slide that's after this, but this is the last way that uh, I'll discuss the synthesis of carboxylic acids. We can have hydrolysis of nitriles. Now, not, now nitriles are just cyano groups, uh, CN triple bonds that uh, we have. They're called nitriles or cyano groups. We can make a nitrile by first running a SN2 reaction where we have a weak base. A secondary Rx. So if we wanted SN2, we'd want to make sure this thing is dry. Because secondary Rx's in a weak base tend to give SN2 products if we're not in aqueous conditions. So we can have with weak bases and primary or secondary Rx's, depending upon, you know, there's some differences in terms of types of weak bases. But if it's a dry solution, no water, we can have SN2 reaction where the cyanide attacks as a nucleophile this carbon 
we drive off the halogen, but these arrows are happening at coming, these arrows are being drawn at the same time, so we're having inversion here. We're not saying this comes off first and then he comes in, that would be S in 1. We're saying this comes in while this is leaving, so we get that inversion. <coughs> now it's not shown here, but it's shown below. We would have inversion, so if this was wedge, this would be dash. If this was dash, this would be wedge, because we're following the script for an S in 2 reaction. So down here we have S1 chloro ethyl benzene. So halfway through, just on the Monday reaction, if we I'm going to consider this as R prime here, we had R prime connected to this carbon. We would know that in the reaction, <coughs> I guess uh, my halogen. I'm going to have to bend this up a little bit. Let's do that again. R prime. This would bend away. We know that the halogen would be replaced with something coming in from this side because we have inversion. The cyanide would be on the left because this was leaving on the right and we pushed this methyl group, inverted it, this methyl group swung facing out, it swung over to the right, There, here it is. And of course the hydrogen that's not shown here would also be swung, he's in a dash here. So we'd have that inversion, that umbrella like effect where the methyl and the hydrogen invert and the cyano group comes in from the left side because the chlorine was leaving from the right because we had our cyanide and I had that come in in an S and 2 manner. So this would be what we would have halfway through the reaction. Now the second part, a workup. Folks, this is a little bit harder because the cyano group does have a lone pair on that nitrogen that can be protonated. But it takes a little bit more oomph to protonate this lone pair on the nitrogen. This lone pair is on a sp hybrid orbital because the nitrogen, if we go back to the top right here, this nitrogen is sp hybridized. It's sp hybridized. This nitrogen has a lone pair that's sticking straight out in an sp hybrid orbital from the CN axis. So it's possible to protonate, but it has a lot of s to p character. It's 50-50, and so it's close to the nucleus. But once we start that protonate, protonation process, things start to roll quickly. It's almost as if nitrogen says, okay, fine, you want to protonate me? We're going all the way, baby. I'm going to go all the way to an ammonium ion, NH4+. So it's going to take a strong acid to drive this, but once it gets started, it starts rolling faster and faster. Towards what end? Towards the change of the proton in this form, more acidic, to a weaker acid, stronger acid to a weaker acid. So we, draw, we drive this not with catalytic amounts of this acid, but equivalent amounts. For every one of these, H3O+, we want to make one of these, NH4+. So this reaction can be driven just with water and strong acids to take that cyano group here and replace it completely with CO double bond, CO, or C, and an OH. So this was the carbon connected to the nitrogen. Now I've read, I've, if you take this right here and rotate it, you can see how this methyl group would rotate to the back and this cyano group has put, been put back into the plane but on the top. So there's not a difference here between this structure and this structure. It's just a change in the conformation. I apologize. I haven't. So we can take again around this bond here. We could rotate. So this methyl group would be on the dash. The, the hydrogen would, we could rotate uh, the uh, hydrogen out front. So it would be on the wedge here. And the cyano group could be drawn in the plane but up to the right. So we could have that cyano group right here. The carbon is still there, but we have taken and protonated four times this nitrogen so that it comes off as an ammonium ion. Now that's my second way of making a carboxylic acid. We've looked at carboxylation of Grignard reagents, and now we've looked at hydrolysis of nitriles, where we can have an alkyl halide go to a nitrile, and then we can have the nitrile hydrolyzed. Right, one reaction that's like that, that I just want to point out, so we've had two ways to make carboxylic acids, that's sort of our focus for this, this video. 
We can do the same sort of thing, just coming up a little bit short of the formation of a um, carboxylic acid. We can start with a cyano group, and we can add a Grignard reagent. So let's do the same thing we should do with any Grignard reagent. We should erase that bond. Say those two electrons are owned by the alkyl group for all intents and purposes. It's a strong base. Strong bases, we can go and attack protons or carbons. There is no acidic proton to any great degree over here. So we can attack this carbon here and start the process of making this imine. So we can, again, let's just do it down here. Let's erase that bond, put the lone pair here on the R, R group, full negative, full positive. This comes in and it, of course advances the electrons to make room for this bond between the C and the R group. The R group loses its negative charge. This nitrogen gains a negative charge. So it has now one more lone pair. And this comes along and binds, comes along for the ride, being close to this negatively charged nitrogen. That would be the end of our day one reaction, Monday. This is just added as a solvent. That's aprotic, meaning dry, no water. But then we can add in the second day reaction, that's sort of what we call Tuesday, workup of Monday, one, two. We can have acid added not to our um, nitrogen like we saw here in the cyano group, but we've added, before we hydrolyzed the cyano group, we added a Grignard reagent. So we basically did this. We made sure this carbon has two alkyl groups off of it. So it can't go to a class 1 carbonyl. We're going to take the nitrogen and continue to protonate it until we get to not just our first protonation, but all the way, if we take that, this end point, well, we say, well, I protonate it once. Well, that's great. But if we have strong acid conditions for this Tuesday reaction, strong acid conditions, it will continue to be protonated. So we protonate it a second time. If it's protonated a second time, the nitrogen becomes charged and water can start attacking this carbon here. So water can start attacking that carbon here. So that, again, it was all pre um, prefaced on the protonation of this nitrogen again. We protonated it once to get here. We protonated it twice to get here. So we've had two protonations of this nitrogen, negative to neutral, neutral to positive. And once it was protonated twice, this oxygen can easily attack this carbon, being drawn in by this whole thing being positively charged and having resonance to localization between this N and this carbon. And now it's game on, because this thing now is sp3 hybridized, and this lone pair is in an sp3 hybrid orbital. It's a very active lone pair. We can easily transfer the proton over to this nitrogen and drive this all the way a few more mechanistic steps not shown we can drive this all the way to NH4 cation so this weak acid all that happened by pushing it with our strong acid so we see a pattern here anytime we have a nitrogen that's off of a carbon whether it be in a triple bond as we have here a double bond as we have here, or we can even have it in a single bond, pick it up at any point, these can be driven off in strong acid conditions. And here's the reason why we need to keep, keep this in mind, because the ending point, this nitrogen with four protons off it is called an ammonium ion, I'm just going to abbreviate ammonium ion, and it's a more stable form of the proton than the hydronium ion. So we're driving this from strong acid to weak acid conditions. All right, well, that's it. It's a long video on the discussion of the formation of these carboxylic acids. We'll look at in the next two videos how we can make other products from acyl halides or how we can make from carboxylic acids acyl halides and how they can react. And also talk about anhydrides, acyl halides and anhydrides acid and hydrides are fairly similar. So the next video is going to look at reactions of acyl halides and acid and hydrides. Bye-bye.